بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد النبي وأزواجه أمهة المؤمنين وذريته وآل بيته كما صليت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Today's talk inshallah will be about the concept of إحسان إحسان you can call it excellence you can call it kindness goodness perfectionism but before we embark on this topic I would like to conclude the topic that we have been discussing the past two Fridays by mentioning a couple of important texts when it comes to having a sound expectation about Allah. It is very important for us to expect goodness from Allah Azza wa Jal, especially if we are striving to obey Allah and do our duty towards Him and striving to purify and enhance our belief in Him. We should expect goodness. And this is what is required of us based on the text, hadith saying of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in which he reports about his Lord Allah Azza wa Jal, that Allah said that I will be for my slave according to his expectation from me. In some narrations, the Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah said, whoever expect goodness from Allah will receive goodness. And whoever expects otherwise, he will receive otherwise. So it is very important for us not to have any despair or lack of hope. On the contrary, if we are doing what we are supposed to be doing, being sincere to Allah, following his Prophet, peace be upon him, then we should expect the promises of Allah to happen to us and come to us in this life and the life to come. Because Allah never tells a lie and Allah never breaks a promise. If these are his promises in his book, such as the promise, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرِنَا وَأُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحِيَّنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَلَنَجِزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ This verse in Surah Al-Nahr, for instance, Allah gives a promise that whoever does good deeds in this life, whether a man or a woman, Allah will give him a good life, a blessed life in this, in this life, of course, and then Allah will reward him plenty in the hereafter based on the best of his deeds, according to the best of his deeds. Also, when you make sincere supplication, invocation to Allah, and he is the one who has promised, Ud'uni astajib lakum, ask me and I will give you, then you should expect to receive. But for somebody to be asking Allah, worshipping Allah, and having no hope in all this, then he's only harming, only harming himself. And actually he's only weakening his own resolve in continuing to worship Allah and continuing to ask, to ask Allah. Also, when it comes to the decree of Allah and things that happen to us or will happen to us in this life, we should also expect goodness, even regardless of what trials we pass through, because trials are part of the, the sunnah of Allah, the, power, the part of his way and law in this life that we are trialed. But even in the midst of trials, Allah has the most beautiful names and the most beautiful actions. So we should expect that even at times of hardship, there is mercy of Allah that encompasses all this. And Allah will give the person who is passing through hardship, patience and contentment, satisfaction, serenity in the heart. And Allah will aid that person who is going some, through hardship. Inna ma'al usri yusra. I will give ease. And that ease will go in accordance to, in, its, in its magnitude, in accordance to the magnitude of the calamity or the hardship the person is passing through. So we have to always think goodness about Allah Azza wa Jal and expect the best from Him because His asma and attributes are al husna, the most beautiful the most kind, the most gentle. So that's, this is what you would expect from someone who has such names and such attributes. The concept of Ihsan. Ihsan, as I mentioned, is goodness, kindness, 
excellence. And it is explained in the hadith of the Prophet in which Jibreel asked him, what is Ihsan? He says, to worship Allah as if you can see Allah, as if you can envision Allah. And if you do not, if you cannot reach this kind of level, then the level that, the second level of Ihsan or excellence in worship is to know that Allah is watching, watching over us or over you. So the first level and the highest level is basically the goal of every believer. And of course, this is the level that was reached, of course, by the prophets and the Siddiqeen, the people of strong belief and certainty in the promise of Allah. Those people who always are engaged in dhikr, they are always engaged in remembering Allah and looking and reflecting on His, on his signs around them, as long as they are constantly engaging in remembering Allah and looking at His signs, the signs are basically His actions that we see in front of us and around us and within us. Since you are seeing this and you are relating it constantly to its maker and doer, then it is as if he is there with you and you can envision him, not with your eyes, but with your insight. Not with your sight, but with your insight. Not with your eyes, but with your, with your heart. If somebody is constantly living in this kind of situation where he sees Allah's actions in everything around him, nothing would move. Even as the Quran told us, a leaf would not fall except by the permission of Allah and he would know where it fell and what the time it fell and why it fell and so on. There's not anything that is moist or dry on earth that he knows about it. There's not an ant or a creature, whether uh, microscopic or macroscopic, except that he is the one, not only who knows, but he is the one who is allowing it and providing, it, providing for it to do what it is doing. And nothing will change and nothing will move and nothing will have power except by the, the except through the power of Allah and the doing of Allah Himself. Okay? So when we have this kind of vision and we envision Allah in our worship, this is the highest level, then our worship for Allah is based on love, is based on yearning, shawq, and hope. And, uh, and the, the yearning for the closeness to get closer and closer, and then the worship for Allah would be stronger, and, um, and there's more khushu'ah, there's more serenity, there's more humbleness, more humility, more concentration, because you can actually see Allah with your heart while you are worshiping Him. But not everyone can reach this level, but this is the goal that we should strive for. The next level is to worship Allah and know that He is watching us. And that is the basic belief that every believer, every believer and every Muslim should have because we know that Allah is all knowing, all hearing, that He is observing everything. So that alone as well will also help the person to reach the second and the higher, the higher level. Now, the first level, they call it Maqam al-Mushahada. This is the level of Mushahada. This is the level of personal witnessing personal awareness of the Creator. The second level is, uh, this, is, uh, this is the level of muraqaba. Muraqaba means that you are being watched over. Somebody is watching over you. There is a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that gives us an idea about the impact that knowing that Allah or seeing Allah or envisioning Allah would have on your heart. This hadith is uh, narrated by Imam al-Bukhari. Uh, it says, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says that Allah has some angels, has some angels who look for those who celebrate the praises of Allah on the roads and paths. And when they find some people celebrating the praise of Allah, they call each other saying, come to your object, your goal. This is what we were looking for. Come to the object of your pursuit. The angels then encircle them with their wings up to the sky of the world. Then their Lord would, uh, would ask them, although he is most knowledgeable of them. Allah knows, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates this scenario to, as a teaching for the angels, of course. Angels were asking initially, why would you create this creation that would create mischief on earth? So Allah is showing the angels, this is what some of those creation that you did not know the wisdom behind are doing. So he would say, their Lord would, uh, then their Lord would ask them, 
what do my slaves, what, what are my slaves doing? What are they doing? His, the angels would ask. They say, Subhanallah, they exalt Allah, they glorify you, uh, they praise you. Allah would then ask them, did they actually see me? The angels would say, no, by Allah, they did not, have never seen you. They did not see you, have never seen you. Allah then would say, how would it be and how would it have been if they actually saw me? The angels would reply, if they would see you, they would worship you even more devoutly and celebrate your glory more deeply. And they would more often declare your freedom from any resemblance to anything. So this shows you that, yes, having this kind of, this kind of concept will change would change the way that we worship Allah. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because he has the highest level of ihsan, he would actually, he would say that um, the most sweet thing that uh, to me in this life is, in, is to pray. So praying to Allah is more sweet to him than anything, any of the pleasures of, of this life. And also he would always be asking Bilal, the, the caller for his adhan, he would ask him, when is the prayer, Bilal? We, uh, we, want, we want our comfort and serenity and tranquility in the salah. When is the salah coming? While, you know, unfortunately, some people would feel the salah as a burden when it comes, oh, now I have to get up and do the salah. But if somebody focuses on his belief and iman and tries to strengthen his connection with Allah, he would actually find the acts of worship much easier much easier on him. It becomes a burden when the belief and the and humility and the humbleness and the focus and the concentration decline, then the salah becomes more of a burden. But the more we are engaged in our salah, the more we would expect and experience sweetness and happiness while worshipping Allah. And this is uh, and, uh, while worshipping Allah, and this is our goal. Inshallah, we'll conclude this talk with a short dua. Allahumma arham ar-rahimin, ya akram al-akramin, ya rabbal alamin. Rahman al-dunya wal-akhirah wa rahimahum, ya hayu, ya qayyum, ya hannan, ya mannan, ya dhal jalal wal-ikram. Nasa'aluka li-anfusina wa li-walidina wal-azwajina wa dhuriyatina wa ahlina wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-hiyai minhum wal-amwat. Allahumma la tada'a lana fi hadha al-yawm al-azim al-mubaraki dhanban illa ghafarta wa la mayitan illa rahimta. Wa la mubtalan illa afaytah wa la maridan illa shafaytah wa la faqeeran. إلا أغنيته ولا مهموما إلا فرجت عنه يا رب العالمين ولا أسيرا مظلوما إلا فككته ولا ظالما إلا قصمته ولا خائفا إلا أمنت أمنته ولا ولدا إلا أصلحته ولا ضالا إلا هديته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة لك فيها رضا ولنا فيها صلاح إلا قضيتها ويسرتها يا رب العالمين Also our brother Asad here his, his mother I think passed away in Saudi Arabia he asks for your dua Inshallah, we'll make a dua for her and for all Muslims uh, who have passed. Allahumma, Allahumma aghfir lahum dhunubahum wa kaffir anhum sayyatim. Allahumma ba'ad baynahum wa bayna dhunubahum wa khatayahum kama ba'adta bayna al-mashriq wa al-maghrib. Allahumma naqihum min al-dhunubi wa al-khataya kama naqayt al-thawb al-abiyad min al-danas. Allahumma abdilhum diyaran khayran min diyarihim wa ahlina khayran min ahlihum. Allahumma la taftinna ba'dahum wa la taftinna wa la tahrimna ajrahum ya rabbil alameen. Wa sallahumma wa sallim wa barikah nabiyyin Muhammad wa aqim al-salah.